Hello and welcome to the Palmdale School District Teachers EdTech Podcast number four. I'm Steve Stuckey. I'll host you host the show with you all from San Francisco today. Along with me are my colleagues and fellow EdTech coaches. Hi, I'm Dan Hopman. I am in the blistering cold of Antarctica and uh, normally I'm in tumbleweed. Hi, I'm Jerry Sloan. I'm in orbit. Hi, I'm Melissa Shields coming to you live from Kona. We are going to do uh, some of the typical things we do during our podcast. We're going to talk about some new updates in Google, so, and I mean new ones, along with how you too can become Google certified educators. We're going to highlight some of the great things we've seen going on in our district in terms of ed tech. And we're going to have a beginning conversation about maker spaces today. Uh, Dan, can you give us some of those updates, please? Sure will. So one of the cool updates that uh, Google has put in for both Calendar and for Google Keep is the ability to create something new without having to go directly to their website to begin with. Here's what I mean. So here I am. I'm just in Google. If I go to cal.new and I press enter, it'll allow me to create an appointment or a, an event directly onto my calendar. I don't have to go to my calendar, create the event. I can just do that really quickly. Same with Google dot, or I'm sorry, keep dot new. I can create a new Google keep directly without having to click anything. Makes it super simple. The is that going to work? Is that going to work? Is that going to work also with things like docs and slides? Uh, and is that one of the updates doc? I Docs don't believe new. so. I don't believe so yet, but let's find it out because that is, and there you go. Oh, so does. I know that they're, yeah, they, they keep adding in new ones. You know, we keep saying new things, but you know, they keep adding new apps to where you can just go in and type that dot new after the tool. So it's a very good possibility that you'll see more as the months go on. I'm finding these That's little cool. tips and tricks do help your productivity uh, a lot. And maybe we should focus on calendar uh, some podcast because using that calendar can really be a time saver uh, in many ways. And also being able to just create an appointment really quickly, especially, you know, even if you're not a teacher, you're an admin, or if you're classified, being able to create, create those. I know it seems like it's seconds that you're saving, but multiply that over the day. I think you're saving a lot of time. The other thing we wanted to talk about was where to find the training for Google certification level one. And so if you go to teacherscenter.withgoogle.com, you'll be able to get there. And so here's what the training center looks like. And the level one is the fundamentals of training. And all you have to do is sign in over here on the right. It'll probably ask you for your Google information. And once you get signed in, it's a matter of just taking the course. And so the course does a really good job of really laying out all the information you need. And when you're ready, all you have to do is take the course. Now, I do find out that it's not just about how you use Google Sheets or Google Slides, but there's some pedagogy behind it to help teachers uh, better use it in their classroom. And so there's two parts to that. For the first part of it is the fact that teachers can, uh, is the pedagogy. So there's two parts to the test. First part, how do you use it in the classroom? It's the pedagogy behind it. The second part is the practical. Here's Google Classroom. How do you share it to the students? And you actually do it in the programs. So it's a really good way for teachers to really show what they know. And these trainings really lead up to that test. If you feel like you need a little bit more as well, Google also has adult education specifically centered on getting a Google search in apply digital skills on that website that they have. Yeah. Training is just one part of it. Um, I know that like, for example, there's, a, there's a, a quick course you can see on the screen where it's the first day of Google slides. So if you have the, those teachers that have never used Google slides and they're like, you know, what is it? Send them here. Cause that's another good way to learn about it as well. So it's not just for the training. It's also just about the general, how to's for Google. All right, thanks, Dan. Uh, guys, we didn't mention that in our school district, there's a $500 stipend 
for those who pass the Google One certification test. So uh, that should be some incentive for you to go ahead and do that. Uh, we're going to highlight a couple uh, of people. And, and first of all, I want to highlight uh, some of my Propel. Propel is the program where we are doing a specific coaching cycle with either a PLC or individuals. And I've got a fourth grade team at Chaparral. Uh, and specifically, I went and observed uh, Leticia Baltazar's class, a fourth grade SDC class, uh, using the Chromebooks to actually collaborate use Google Classroom, use Google Slides, along with using thinking maps to bring in uh, knowledge from the stories they've been reading. They did an outstanding job, highly engaged uh, for a long time, uh, and were quite successful. Good job, Leticia. Uh, Melissa, you have someone you'd like to highlight, correct? Yes, so we got some really good news. One of our teachers, got the um, Outstanding Teacher of the Year Award. Let me see if I can share this here. Is it working? Do you see it my is. screen? Congratulations is. to Michelle Lake. Yay, super awesome. She got QLA's Outstanding Teacher of the Year. And now, which I know that she got a free registration to Q in the spring. And now she's going to be up for like the whole of Q, she's um, one of the, she's now entered into the whole Q organization's Teacher of the Year. So congratulations, Michelle. We are so super proud of you. So uh, as I said, we are going to have a little conversation because this could go on quite long today. So we want to, I'm, I'm going to try to rein you guys in, but a lot of our schools are actually having maker spaces built on their site as part of new construction. And other sites are looking for ways to use space they already have to create a makerspace. And so today, I guess we want to talk about well, what is a makerspace, guys? Certainly, it's a place for creativity. And it's something to know that there's a place where students can explore and experiment and design things on their own. And then there's also the idea of having a purpose and a goal of something that you want to design and create, perhaps a problem that you want to solve. And that's another aspect of makerspaces. Of course, that's a general principle, right? Not the specifics. So what I like about the idea of using the makerspaces and you know, we'll get into that, that conversation is getting kids to create. Um, it's not just a, hey, what do you want to build today? All right, let's put it together. It's going through a design plan from beginning to end starting with the plans and the purpose, going all the way and going to a finished product with changes happening throughout based on the needs of the project. And that's a real key issue too, Dan, is the fact that you're redesigning something. So often in education, we have a student do something and then turn it in and it's over versus to do something or create something and then to think, how can we make it better? And to have that collaborative experience that scientists and engineers and, and software designers really use to improve and improve and improve and continue a project. Well, teachers often ask, how do I teach my kids to persevere? Well, one of those is to provide opportunities for them to design, fail, redesign, test, fail. You get the idea, right? Um, and I, I, I know that I've talked to some teachers who have brought kids into their school's makerspace, and it, they've, I've been told it, they think it's done, it didn't work, and they, they haven't learned that persistence to go and redesign and rethink what they're doing and keep on testing. So part of what has to happen is sort of a mental culture change on, on how to do that in our schools. And I think a lot of teachers think that, oh, that means I have to have a background in design or I have a background in building or, and you really don't. It's really about the students discovering, finding answers to problems and really trying to discover their own way of solving whatever that problem is. And then the other thing that teachers all think is, well, you know, I don't know how to code. I don't know how to use a 3D printer. Those aren't always used during uh, makerspaces. It could be something like, a sewing kit where they're trying to sew together materials for whatever their project is. 
It could uh, be duct, duct tape and uh, cardboard. Yeah. Right? Absolutely, absolutely. So there isn't one, there's no one way to build a makerspace. It really is dependent on the needs of the kids and what their project is. A great way to start too is with simple STEM challenges, spaghetti noodles, cardboard tubes, right? Tape, maybe marshmallows even. And those are really accessible online and they're free, those STEM challenges, and they're for every grade level. So start starting off with a uh, teacher directed, here's the problem, might be a great way to get them thinking about that design challenge and, and going after it rather than, then that maybe that will lead them to uh, creating their own problems and designing a new way to solve them. And some of the projects that can come up are things that you may have a lesson plan or you may have um, an idea, oh, we're gonna study such and such culture. And then the kids say, well, what kind of musical instruments do they have? And, and then all of a sudden those questions, the kids are the ones who can generate the ideas for what to be made in these maker spaces. So I walked into a classroom last week and there was all the, a bunch of these like there were cereal boxes and there was like twine and plastic string and all these things. And I thought, well, these look like musical instruments. And she said, oh, Miss Butterfield's class. She says, oh yeah, my kids are making musical instruments. And I didn't see, they were very different. There was no like specific, but they were, they wanted to make a, I guess the kids kind of problem solve what kind of sounds they wanted to make and the tools that they used to, to make those sounds and they were putting them together. And I think they were doing this just in her room, so. So yeah, you can, you can go hog wild with this. You can start off with tape and cardboard and you can buy uh, makey makey kits and involve coding and electronics. Uh, but, you know, I'm sure it's not just about sticking wires in a banana and making a switch. Uh, there's got to be something more to it than that. Yeah, don't. Can don't you do forget. that with a banana? Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I heard about potatoes. I don't know about pickles bananas. Pickles are the best. I love pickles for that. I don't see wasting a banana like that. <laughs> don't forget parent donations and things like that as well. And getting families involved in it. I mean, what I do love is that you might think, wait, what about the benchmark standards? but this is something you can incorporate and it's also critical thinking that the students get that's a deeper learning process right there. And not only is it a critical thinking, but also it, it helps the students to develop this growth mindset of, hey, I get to develop something of my own. It's not something that, you know, it's within the parameters of what the teacher's telling me, but it's mine. No one else can take it away from me. Yeah. Uh, I'm gonna share real quick a, a website and a name. Uh, hopefully you can all see right now this Create a Makerspace in a Week webinar. I will put this link uh, in the description on our YouTube broadcast uh, so you can tell um, what's going on. But there is a little course by John Spencer. He has done this with college on down through middle school and has a complete course overview. This is a free one that's 37 minutes. Of course, he has a paid one as well, uh, but you might want to check out uh, John uh, Spencer and see we'll what he also, has to say about makerspaces. We'll also add that link and a couple more articles that just give a general overview into the newsletter that's coming out on uh, November 11th as well. So, uh, uh, edu no, go ahead. No, I'll say real quick, Edutopia has a great video as well about makerspaces and growth mindset. You know, don't think that there's one way to do it. There's multiple different ways to do it. Do your research, find what works for you, and take it. And start small. You don't have to yeah. sit there and think you're creating a, a world-solving problem, problem in your first time out. Kids need to learn uh, a lot of skills to be able to be successful within a makerspace. Well, and one Very note, true. too, is you don't need an official makerspace. You really can move a few desks away or put them together and do something in your classroom as well. All right, so we're gonna, we're gonna leave this discussion now and hopefully that will spark some interest in people who watch this. Melissa, we have some upcoming trainings. Starting tomorrow, uh, the 7th, we have a Sammer Slammer with Slides. Did I say that right? It sounds like a tongue twister. Uh, just leveling up the rigor in your classroom using Google Slides for more than a PowerPoint presentation type of thing. Um, exploring the world with my maps on the 12th. Uh, that's the Tuesday after the three-day weekend. So uh, make sure you sign up for that. Um, for our Chromebook Academy alumni, um, Hapara Workspace, kind of going deeper into those, um, using it as a planning tool and using it as a way to, uh, another way to 
give information and work, manage your classroom. Um, on the 19th, EverFi, a free, um, serve a free software that it allows you to explore SEL. Um, there's like these little modules. It's a lot of fun, kind of a gamification way of, of learning and going over some of those math and science skills. Um, and then on the 21st, right before our uh, Thanksgiving break, we have Illuminate. We've been um, getting a lot of people have been asking about doing creating ass assessments in Illuminate. So um, we'll have that one for you on the 21st. That's a Thursday. Jerry, you have a preview of the newsletter coming out that you'd like to remind people to check out. Okay. So if you take a look here, and let me go to this page. Then uh, it'll certainly have some changes in it, but we do want to add some of those uh, makerspace uh, articles and resources. Uh, we've got a little Meg Butterfield's class doing Flipgrid, which is so exciting. Um, and uh, an announcement, National STEM Day is actually this Friday. So something to think about as you're uh, considering what to do with your last few days, a few, couple of teaching resources. Last few days before break, actually it's quite a few days, but they can be fun and wonderful for students and teachers. All right, thank you much. And then I am going to highlight the, uh, a book that many of us have read and now while well, we've gone into this, there is a version oh. too. I, yeah, like we can't show the book here, but what I can do is take you back to this screen and tell you a little bit about it. It's called Edu Protocols, and Edu Protocols, and you can find out more about it at eduprotocols.com, are great little activities that align with all areas of the curriculum. And this website's great for giving you some templates to use to get started, uh, talking about building culture at the beginning of the year. Uh, great quick activities that increase student learning. It's backed by the research. We are going to do a Tech Tuesday on Edu Protocols, I think in January, is it, Melissa? Keep in mind that Edu Actually, Protocols, so I'm so sorry I'm interrupting you, but I want to create that excitement, right? Get people going because it, they save you time and they still do a lot of teaching, not to mention growing a uh, growth mindset for students. Anyway, go ahead, Melissa. Uh, our, actually, our first uh, Edgy Protocols um, Tech Tuesday is on the 5th of December, so in a couple of weeks. The weekend, the Tuesday, no, the Thursday, right after Thanksgiving break. Oh, I guess we better get on that, huh? Yeah. Yeah, all right, so <laughs> take a look at that book. It's a, it's a good read, you need to check it out. If you need to get hold of your ed tech coaches, you got Dan, he's easy to find at Tumbleweed. Uh, the rest of you can go to our website, palmdalesd.org forward slash ed tech, and take a look at professional development. You will see which schools your coaches are involved. Email us, uh, give us a call, and we will come out and see you. Here's all of our contact information. That's beautiful. Thank you, Melissa. I appreciate that. And as always, we're going to end this uh, with this thought that remember you are not who you were. You are working on who you'll be. You guys have a great month. Enjoy your Thanksgiving break and we'll see you back in December.